the Joe Rogan experience. One of the reasons why I was really excited about you being today is because this weekend, there's, there's, a, it's a great fight card. Like the Steep A DC, DC rematch is an amazing card, amazing fight for that card. I love the card in general, but the Paulo Costa Yoel Romero fight. That's the one that perplexes me. Mm. Like, how does that go down? What happens when these two fucking Brahma bulls smash heads in the middle of the octagon? First of all, it's all-time best body fight ever, right? Yes. Oh, for sure. For Absolutely. Sure. How I do mean, you, they both look like they're chiseled out of rock. It's they ridiculous. They look like statues yeah. of gods, both yeah. of them. If you're going through options for bodies, if you could choose, <laughs> like... It's flip a coin in these guys. Like, he ain't getting robbed either way. Whether no. you're Costa, Romero might have an advantage because he, he's so freakish. He's so freakishly built that I mean, you can't imagine someone having a better body. Yeah, you just have a different body. It's just it's, look at it, the two of them there. Look at ridiculous. Yoel. Look at Yoel in right there when he's posing. He doesn't even look real. Jesus Christ, he's such a tank, dude. <laughs> The thing, the difference in the, in this in this fight between the two is that I think, well, we know Romero can fight for five rounds and he will take his time early, but Costa comes out throwing guns straight he's away. He's dangerous, like, man. He's wild straight Costa's away. Costa's very, very, very dangerous. He's got outstanding striking. He's got real power, and he's fast. He's fast and powerful. The th the thing is though, is he as fast and powerful as Yoel? And you know, he's beaten really good guys like Uriah Hall, but this is the cream of the crop. Mm. I mean, he's in there against the motherfucker of all motherfuckers <laughs> at 185. And you talk about a dude who just can explode on you and send you flying through the air. Yeah. He ragdolls people. He does pe the shit to people when he's wrestling them, and you just go, what the fuck? He jumps at them with shots. When he knocked out Luke Rockhold with that left hand, you're like, what the fuck? And that shotgun to and the And then face steps afterwards. in, boom, and then yeah. kisses him. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. That's his, as David Goggins would say, he stole souls. Yeah. He stole his souls. He is a ridiculous athlete. He's I'm, ridiculous. My feel is that Paolo Costa's undefeated mentality might play into, play into Romero's hands a bit. Because Costa's going to come crashing forward, and Romero will just take his time. Maybe. You know? and, and Costa has gassed. I mean, he gassed on the Ultimate Fighter. So if he fights hard for a couple of rounds and Romero's you know, still strong in the third. I think he's a different guy now. I really do. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think Paulo Costa is at the top of the heap for a real reason now, and a lot of it is dedication. Walid Ishmael. Um, that guy know, was a lunatic. I love that guy. He's, he's got, training. He's awesome. He's, yeah, and he's I remember training the old Pride with, days. Paulo Costa, he's working with them, and okay. he talked to me about him. And you know how crazy Walid is? He's like, he measures his food. <laughs> That's what he kept saying. He measures his food. <laughs> like, that dude has, like, everything portioned out. It, he's just, like, 100% eyes on the prize. Mm. He goes, That's all he does is train. He goes, This guy doesn't party. He doesn't fuck around. He's just concentrating on measuring his food and training. So, what about the money that Romero's come into recently? Does crazy. Does that change his mentality at all? I, here's the thing, man. I don't know if it's real. I don't no. know if they're ever going to give him that money. Really? Just stare down, man. Whoa, that's daddy! But that's the guy not to tangle with. Cue. Security Steve Reed on the right hand oh, side. Oh yeah, Steve's a bad motherfucker. Oh, he's Steve's got not some playing stories. games. He's he's got, he's got eyes. Yeah. Look at the dude's eyes. He's like, yeah. he knows what the fuck is up. He saved a couple of shows in Europe that could have gone very, could have gone south. Oh, I, I'm sure. I have a little story for you from the the Gdansk show. So like, I'm standing on stage at the Wayans. I'm announcing the fighters as they come out. And um, we have a fight on the card. We have uh, a Polish fighter against uh, Anthony Hamilton. And I had the voice come through in my ear saying that that fight wasn't going to be walking. So just to drop it off the schedule, like during the weigh-ins are going. And immediately I'm thinking that's kind of kind of strange. And I'm not sure whether, obviously, you know, some areas of Poland, there's a racial undertone. I wasn't sure whether it was because Anthony Hamilton was going to get some heat if he walked out on stage. The next thing, I've got a, quite a unique perspective because I can see down the two tunnels where the fans walk into the floor. And I saw this whole bunch of like skinheads with like bomber jackets and boots just come marching in. And they filled the floor space and then they went all went and sat down in one of the blocks and just sat there waiting for him. And it was because he was from a rival football firm. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, I'd heard about that. Yeah. That's right. I had heard about that, and that's why they canceled the fight. Yeah, they moved it over to Australia. Fucking but like, they came a. around security. They came through the glass in the at the arena, just. <laughs> and if it wasn't for Steve, that 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 whole thing would have gone south. Like he's the, yeah. Dude, do you imagine if there was a fucking hooligan brawl in the middle of a UFC? Oh man, that'd be awful. Terrible for the sport. Yeah.
That'd be yeah. terrible. No, Steve is a, he's a wise man. Stop Sees everything. That. How do you feel like Romero and Costa plays out if you had a bank on it? If I gave you a hundred bucks, what do you, how, you, what do you see, how do you see this play out? I think Costa starts fast and I think he pushes Romero back up against the fence. Romero defends it, you know, covers and covers, throws a couple of shots to push Costa back. And then I think the second round comes and Costa comes crashing forward and Romero catches him with something right hook over the top, something like that. The technique I'm watching out for for Costa, which is going to be useful for Romero, he throws a great body kick to left hook. And Romero's got this bad habit, and you can see it all the way through the Whitaker fights. Every time someone throws a kick, he does this like over-dramatized scoop with his arm to like parry it out of the way. If he's parrying out, out of the way that body kick, he's going to be wide open for the left hook. So that's something I'm watching out for with Costa. I just feel like he's overconfidence, his willingness to take risks, and the fact that Romero's patient, can take his time, he's never in a rush to get the knockout because he knows he can get it at any point in the fight. I feel like his patience might play off and Costa might, might walk onto something. Mm, imagine if he KOs Costa and we play this over that. <laughs> you look like a goddamn hero. Yeah, but like what's most likely to happen is that it's going to be completely <laughs> opposite. And everyone's going to be like, why has he got a job with the UFC as an analyst? Well, every now and then <laughs> you're so wrong. Like when Derek Lewis fought Francis Ngannou, I was like, holy shit, don't go for popcorn. This is going to be fucking chaos. Yeah. This is going to be fucking chaos. I was nervous before that fight started. I was like, holy shit, here we go. I'm like, Francis Ngannou is going to be gunning for the title again. He's going to come out guns blazing. Derek Lewis goes to war every single goddamn time they're both enormous i'm like fuck here we go nothing yeah. nothing 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 but were you working with Cruz on that night there was somebody else who you were working with and they said the words that you never say during a heavyweight fight as soon as it's about to start they go there's no way this is going the distance Ooh, yeah that's a rough thing to that say kills it straight away and I remember this, they, like, I was so excited, it. and they went, there's no way this is going to the distance. I'm like, oh. Don't you put that voodoo Jig. on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs>